Hey everyone, and welcome to part 8 in my SQLized tutorial series, where now I'm going to be talking about constraints and validation. But, so let's get started with constraints. So constraints are rules defined at the SQL level. In fact, even just defining the data type is a constraint, as the data type is a rule that says this column must be an integer, or this must be a string. So this here is a constraint. It is saying for description, it must be a string. Um, this is a constraint for wit code rocks, it must be a boolean. However, there are of course more complex constraints than this. For example, a unique constraint. A unique constraint ensures that all values in a column or group of columns are different. For example, if you have a column of email addresses, you might want every email address in that column to be unique, or you don't want repeating email addresses. If a constraint fails, an error is thrown by the database and SQLize will forward this error to JavaScript. So if the unique constraint error failed, then SQLize will forward a SQLize unique constraint error. So let's trigger this real quick. I'm going to make a, um, a new field in our database, and I'm going to call it, let's just call it email. So we're going to create an email column. And then for type, this is just going to be data types.string. But now another constraint that we're going to make is unique to true. So this means anything in this column, there can't be repeats, or we can't have repeated emails. So now let's trigger this. So within here, working with our updated table so it'll have this email column, let's not find a user, but let's create one. And so we have already, or let's just do, of course, just create. I don't think create one is a function. We'll do create and um, we'll specify a username, um, a password, and let's just leave it at that. And then of course an email. So let's do in here, delete all this. We want our username. Let's just do something like 1111. I don't know, running out of ideas. Password. Let's just do um, my password. And then let's do an email of, say, tom at aol.com. Something like this. So user.create. Let's then just log the data. And then to JSON, so we get a cleared up um, of what it looks like. So let's run node index.js. We got an invalid argument type. And so this is because we still have um, our setters and getters in our that we made in the previous video in our description and um, password and everything. So it's using these methods on undefined. So let's just actually comment these out for this just so we don't get confused by that. So I'm just going to comment out the basically everything we made in the previous video. But now, see if they're still inserted. But let's run this. Um, yep, so we have all the way over here, they were still inserted, just we got an error on the getter, I believe. We have tomaol.com. And now because we have that unique constraint right here, let's see what happens if we try to create this user again. So run this. You can see we get an error message down here which is coming from our catch statement here. I'm going to, have to clean that up a bit right there. And you can see, it should say, duplicate error, um, duplicate entry, tomaol.com for, for user.email. Because we have unique here, so we, we can't have multiple um, columns here, or multiple repeat values. So let's just, if we add an s.coms, then if we run that, you see it was inserted successfully, and we have the email, and then if we check in here, of course run it, you can see that we are, our user is still here, Tom AOL. And also you can see our getters weren't applied, which is why we just have my password and not the encrypted version, or the hashed and salted version. But let's go back in. And so that's really all I'm going to show you about constraints. You can see that we've really been working with constraints the whole time throughout the series so far. So now I'm just going to start talking about validations. And so validations are checks performed by SQLize using JavaScript. And if the validation fails, then no SQL query will be sent to the database at all. And these validations can be very complex, such as if you want to provide a custom validator function or a regex expression, or they can be one of SQLize's uh, built-in validators. For example, SQLize has built-in validators, such as to check if the input is an email, a URL, an IP address, and many more. To actually use a validator, we specify the key validate in our column definition. So similar to how we did in the beginning of the series, how we just had validate right here and our length on username. 
but so let's create one for our email column because SQLize has some built-in ones. Let's do validate, and then we're gonna pass in a key to make it sure that this, um, actually what is inserted into our email column is an email. So to actually do that, we just use the key is email, and then we just pass a Boolean, and that will be true. So by default, it is false. But so then, these validations that we have, or what we put inside validate, are, run, are automatically run on the methods create, update, and save. So basically anything that involves altering our, the data in our database or in our table. So for example, if we created a user who specifies a badly formatted email address using the create function, they would not be allowed to be inserted. So let's just insert a bad email. So let's do like, I don't know, hello, because that's obviously not an email. Let's see what happens if we do that. You can see we get validator key is email and validation error, validation is email on email failed. So you can see that this here, this right here, is email true, is um, stopping the data from being inserted into the table. And something we can also do is actually before our user is even inserted, we can check if it is validated before we insert it by using a method called validate. So we could first, let's do um, const user equals, if you can remember from the beginning of the series we use the build method which doesn't actually insert anything into our database and it isn't in asynchronous it just returns an object and let's say we do um, email to be Tom and then we can run dot validate and then actually don't want to do that let's just return user dot validate and then if we just log the data I believe it returns a promise. Find out in a sec. Then we can see what it, if this was actually a viable thing to be inserted. So we get, yep, you can see we get a validation error. And now something else we can do is we can actually create our own custom validator functions. So it's better to sh just show you this as an example. Let's do, make one in our age column. And so the way we do that is we just use, of course, the key validate again, because we're making a validator. And then let's pass in an object. And let's specifically, let's create one um, on our age column that checks if the user is 21 or older. And if their age is less than 21, we won't let them sign up. And so what I'm going to do is, what you can do is you make a method. I'm going to call it is old enough. And then the value is, um, of course, the age that is being updated or inserted. And then we would just want to check if the value is greater than 21. Then we're just going to throw an error. So you do throw new error, new error object, and just say too young, like this. So now let's go in and let's create a user. Where is this down here? And we're going to do return user dot create. And then we have username, because it can't be null. Let's just do Mike. And then let's do age of, say, 14. I don't think we have anything else that needs validating, so let's just run those. And we can see we have an error. There we go. Original error, too young. So it is running our function up here. Uh, where is it? Is old enough. And then if they aren't, so if they are too young, it's just throwing a new error. And that's what we're getting down here. And now we can also, there's a lot of things we can do that with, um, with our own custom validators. So let me show you another one. Let's create a, a custom one, but instead of a function, Let's use one that is called is in, which checks if the value is in one of the provided values. So the way we did here is we basically just specified our own function. We can also use some built-in things. So it's easier to just show you this. So let's do get rid of is email and let's just do is in. I'll leave a link to um, the page with all the keys and everything. But let's just say we have me at soccer.org. And then also me at soccer.com. So what this is going to do is any, anything trying to be inserted into our email column, it'll check if the provided value is in these, this array. And if it isn't, then it, it will throw an error. So let's do, first let's just insert one of these. Also get rid of this. And let's just make it so we know it won't throw an error. Let's do 31. And then let's do email to be me at soccer.org. 
and then this should run fine. So let's run this. There we go. So it has the extra data because I didn't do dot to JSON. But if we check in our MySQL database and go down to the bottom, you can see we get Mike and then the password over here. But now let's go back in and let's create one that isn't in that list. So me at soccer is fun.org. Let's insert this. You can see we get an error, validator key is in. So it always gives you the key. So this is one to check for the provided value is one of the ones that you provide in this array. And of course with SQLize there's a lot more ways to, um, to customize things. So for example we can make our own message. So let's do one, let's make another validation for age and let's get rid of this in here. And what we're just going to do is we're going to use a, a built-in validator called isNumeric. And then if we want to customize the, error, the message that is provided for this, for example, we would do something like, you must enter a number for age. Because if not, it'll just provide the default message. So let's run this. Or actually, I don't think that error will even run. Let's do... We'll, we'll keep this so we don't get an error there. And let's change our age from a number to a string. Let's see what we get. So in here, oh, duplicate entry for me at soccer.org. Okay, so let me just get rid of this actually because this is going to be, it's going to get annoying. So let's do just 12 because I don't think that's something. Let's run this. And actually our user was inserted. And so this is most likely because even though it's a string, it's still technically a number. So let's just add an F and a G inside there. And let's run this. And now we're getting an error saying is numeric. And we can see the message, you must enter a number for age, which corresponds to what we put up here. But if we say we just got rid of this and we just said is numeric and set this to true, now let's run it again. You can see now we just have the message as validation is numeric on age field. So that's just a way to customize the message. And if we wanted to say use a custom validator for something that takes arguments, so for example, our is in, now I wish I didn't get rid of this, but let's just go back to where we were. So if we have this is in here, if we want to specify a message for this, we would just do it. We change is in here to be an object. It's going to get messy. And then we use the key args for the arguments. And then we use the key message for the message. So let's get rid of this. And then we could say something like the provided email must be one of the following. And then like dot dot dot. So that's just if you wanted to provide a message with this as well. And now something important to mention is how allow null interacts with validators. If a column doesn't allow null values, or in other words allow null is set to false. So let me see, I think we probably have one up here. Allow null to false for our username and then say a null value is actually passed, then all the validators will be skipped and a validation error will be thrown. However, if a column does allow null values by using allow null to true, which is actually the default for every column, and a null value is passed, then only the built-in validators will be skipped. Custom validators or the validators you made will still be run. So we can make a custom validator that checks if the value is null, and if it is, perform some operations. So let's go to our email and let's just specify, um, first I'm going to get rid of this is in, and I'm, besides new yeek, uh, unique, I'm also going to add allow null, and I'm going to set that to true as well. And so then let's make our custom validator, so my email validator, and we'll pass in the value that we retrieve, because remember this is the same as when we were making one for age, and we were making our own custom one called is old enough. So we're just making a function that uses the value that is going to be inserted or is being used to update the table. And then let's just say if value is equal to null, then once again we will throw an error saying please enter in email. So we allow null values, but our custom validator can still interact with the null value. So let's do, let's pass in a null for email. And let's see what this does. Oh, so it still created the email because I believe it was actually passed in as 
undefined. So let me try email. Let's pass in null. And now we get our error. You can see the error, please enter an email, and that is what we have here. So if you don't actually specifically specify null, it won't throw that, because I believe it might pass un undefined or something like that, but that's just a good thing to note. And so now the final thing I want to go over is model-wide validation. So we've been using basically column validation, but model-wide validation can validate the model further after the field-specific validators have run. So this will run after each of the field-specific ones that we've been making. For example, you could check to make sure the user's password is different than their username. You do a model-wide validation on the third object of the model definition and use the key validate. So in here where we have freeze table name true and timestamps, if we want to do a model-wide validation, we do validate. And then what we do is we just pass in the validation function that we want. And so I'm going to make a custom one, and it's going to be username pass match, so basically to the username and password match. And also just uh, just noted that the context of the object is passed, so you can use this to access the properties of the object being validated. So we could do if this dot username equals this dot password, then we're going to throw a new error. And we could say something like password cannot be your username. And then we could just do an else, and let's just, if not, let's just log, I don't know, soccer, just because. But so then let's create a username, and let's make a password. That's also Mike. And let's also get rid of this email here. And let's run this. And what do we get here? Unexpected token. Oh, and that's because I didn't use a semicolon, or I used a colon instead of a semicolon. To save this and then let's run this again. What do we get? Seems like we got a valid name. There we go. So password cannot be your username, which is this error here. And so this is run after um, every other column specific validation has been run. So just like field validators, the model, the model validator method fails if they throw an error. But so this is my video on validation and constraints with SQLize. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to be going over is actually how to write your own raw queries with SQLize. So we've been using a lot of finder methods, uh, methods like create, but if we want to actually run our own SQL queries, is what I'll be going over in the next video, and some other cool things such as SQL injection and how can we can prevent that with SQLize as well. So I'll see you in the next video, and thank you for watching.